There's something that I've been hiding from you guys, and it's time to spill the beans. Ah! Do it. No, you cannot do this. Okay, I just peed on the stick, and now we're waiting for the results. You wanna come look? I'm scared. That's yeah, okay. Do you know it yet? Yeah. Is it good or bad? No, I don't know. Holy sh! <laughs> How is that possible? Well, congratulations. <laughs> Cece is going to be a big sister and there is so many things different about this pregnancy than the first time around when I had Erisi. One of it being that I almost had gestational diabetes. Now what is gestational diabetes? It's when your body can't regulate the blood sugar and um, you have a higher glucose level and the blood sugar ends up getting into baby's blood, making the baby become larger than it should, and then it creates all kinds of different complications um, after giving birth or during labor, um, which was really scary for me, even though I know that it's totally normal amongst Asian women, especially those in their 30s. Um, I had a ton of friends who had gestational diabetes, but for me, it was really scary because I was so healthy the first time around that it was just a shock to hear that I failed the test. So what happened was that I had to go back and take a three hour test where you have to drink like this really concentrated, almost like Gatorade or Kool-Aid. It was so sugary and it spikes up your blood sugar level. Basically, you have to take a blood test every hour for three hours to see if your body could regulate the blood sugar and take it back down. Luckily, I passed that one, but I will have to take another test at my 26 week mark to make sure that everything is okay. That probably was the worst part of, it was just really stressful and it was scary and I didn't know what to expect. I think that's the hardest thing is that when you don't know what to expect and you think that something could be wrong and it could put the baby at risk, it just ends up being really scary. Um, otherwise, I generally have a bad time during the first trimester. This time around was actually pretty rough because everything made me sick. I couldn't eat for the longest time because I felt just so much indigestion, nothing digested, and it just sat right here. So I probably threw up almost every day. And that was really different from the first time around because even though I did throw up with Erisi, it was not this often. I just took some heartburn pills and that really helped, but it really helped to not eat such large meals either. One of the things that I absolutely could not get near was onions. Like the smell, just cutting it. I eat onions almost every day in every single meal that I cook. So not being able to cook with it was a little bit weird, but just how sick it made me. Oh, I remember making sloppy joes for us and as soon as I took the first bite, I had to run to the bathroom and do my thing. And after that, I just could not, I could not. Another thing is now I have a toddler I have to run around with and chase after, so I am extremely tired. Now, if you guys have noticed um, that I've missed a few videos here and there, it was because I couldn't get my act together and feel good enough to film, which is really sad because this is my job and I really do take it seriously, but just when you don't feel good and all you wanna do is lay in bed or just you feel like pukey, it's so hard to pull yourself together. And all the videos that you guys have been seeing were days that I actually felt good enough to film. So I'm really happy that I was at least able to produce a few decent content for the channel in the past few months. Now let's talk about cravings. 
the first trimester, I didn't have too many cravings just because nothing I ate made me feel good. Citrus was all I wanted, but of course, because I had that gestational diabetes scare, I really couldn't go all out and eat whatever the heck I wanted just because I wanna be mindful that this could happen again at the 26 week mark um, because I have to retake the test. So I'm still trying to be really healthy, eat whole grains. I live a pretty healthy lifestyle to begin with so just being mindful of what i eat and um not going all out has been important but all i crave these days is chick-fil-a prior to this pregnancy i had never even had a chick-fil-a and i posted that on my stories when i walked into the restaurant i asked what should i order so many of you guys were like hold the phone how have you never been to a chick-fil-a i just don't eat fast food that often but after that i'm like oh Every time I pass by there, I'm like, hmm, I should get one. But Nate's like, no, you need to stay healthy, which I totally get. So I'm trying not to indulge too much, but I think once a week is fair. I'm 15 weeks uh, right now. Baby's the size of an orange. But I just wanted to bring up that I wanted to share this news so much earlier um, during the pregnancy because we were so happy and so excited. But I decided to keep it to myself for several reasons. One of it being that I actually lost a job because um, they found out I was pregnant as well, which is not like a discrimination thing. It's just that this campaign and their policy is to not have pregnant women promote things, which is fine. So I was afraid of like the backlash of announcing that I was pregnant, which at the same time, I shouldn't worry so much, but because this is my work, it did it did cause a little bit of like nervousness. You know what I mean? It's almost like letting your boss know that you're pregnant um, because you're scared you'll get in trouble because you're missing so much work to go to the doctor's office or something like that. But I just wanna bring up that women are usually scared to let people know that they're pregnant because of whatever might happen. And I think that's just so sad because it's such good news that you wanna share with the world. And let's say if it does turn to sour news or like bad news or sad news, I would wanna be able to share that and have comforting, like people comfort me through it instead of like going through it all by myself, which, is contradictory to what happened uh, with me keeping this a secret until now. I did tell like my best friends and my family and stuff like that, but I just wanted to bring that up and kind of talk about it. I want to know how you guys feel about it. I feel like this taboo is kind of outdated and weird because now that we're so open with each other on like social media and whatnot, we should be able to talk about it, right? I remember going to my first doctor's appointment and seeing the baby's heartbeat at six weeks. And even though I've already been through this with Eresy, it's still such an amazing feeling. It's like, this is such a miracle. Like I can't believe I have another baby inside of me, something that's growing and producing and I don't know, I'm starting to get emotional again, but it's just such a miracle and I'm so, I feel so blessed to be able to be give Eresy a sibling and to get to go through this all over again, regardless of how I felt during the first trimester. Women always say they loved being pregnant and then my friend and I joke that they must have forgotten how bad it felt during the first trimester, but I think we forget about all those things because the end result, having that baby is so worth it. All the work and all the pain and the Charlie horses, <laughs> all the weird things your body goes through is so worth it. I would love to create more pregnancy um, journey videos along the way. So if there's anything specific that you wanna know about, like my pregnancy skincare routine or like my eating, like healthy eating ideas, dressing a pregnant body, which I have found to be very challenging the first time around and this time around. Drop me a comment, let me know what you wanna see because I definitely wanna share more of this journey because I know what to expect. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.